colleges. They claim they flipped a coin 10,000 times and it approximately came out 50% heads and 50% tails. And you're checking them out, huh? Yeah. So far the conclusions hold up. I got uh, 4,685 heads and 4,596 tails. <laughs> tails? Boy, how people can waste their time on silly experiments like this is beyond me. <laughs> Ma'am, he's harmless. Oh, why doesn't he have a saddle on? He is a horse, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 no offense. I, I meant a very fine horse, like a black beauty. <laughs> Madam, this is Prince Hamlet of Kronberg von Auxmeyer the Third. You're kidding. Hey, haven't I seen that animal on TV or someplace? Yes, that's why we're here. We were filming a commercial at Lost Lake when our jeep bogged down. Oh. Well, we have accommodations here at the Shady Rest, Mr. Uh... Morton. Thank you, but I'm working against a deadline. I have to get this film back to my office. Is there any transportation around here? Boy, is he in luck. You're talking to the general manager of the Carson Elliott Airlines. You have an airline out here? Sure. Negotiating for a flight tower right now. Oh? Ben Miller won't sell his silo. <laughs> Come with me. I'll get you a charter flight on our flagship. <laughs> nice meeting you, man. Nice to meet you. It's a brave dog. Tell him. Oh, there she is. That's your flagship? <laughs> yeah. Lockheed and Boeing got fouled up with some government contracts and having a hard time pushing them for the fleet order. This is Steve Elliott, our chief pilot. Hi. I want to make connections with the main airline. I have to get to New York as soon as possible. You can handle him and the dog, can't you, Steve? Oh, not the dog. Oh, you're not taking the dog with you? I better not risk it. If anything happened to him, it would be my neck. No kidding. He's that valuable an animal? Valuable? When we travel on a commercial airline, my company takes out $5,000 insurance on me and $100,000 on him. <laughs> yeah. You take good care of Hamlet while I'm gone, and I'll match this with another 50 when we get back. I'll look after him just like he was a four-legged Fort Knox. Which is exactly what he is. I want nothing but the best for him, including your finest accommodations. Don't you worry. He'll stay right with me in the President Wilson suite. President Wilson? Yeah, that's Fred Wilson, president of the Pixley Feed and Grain. Well, I guess I have no choice. Can we go now? Anytime. if he decides to inhale. But he's just trying to protect me. Against him? 
He leaves more than that on his plate. What are you doing here? Morton flew out with Steve. I'm in charge of keeping him while he's gone. You mean you've taken on the responsibility of that valuable animal? Morton knows what he's doing. He's a shrewd judge of character. That's why he chose me for the job. What other choice did he have? Well, he could have tied him to a tree. Well, when it's a toss-up between a willow and you, I can see where you'd have the edge. But Uncle Joe, he's a big responsibility. What if something happens? That's impossible, Kate. He spends every waking moment with me. What do you suppose he eats? I don't know. I just hope it isn't us. Well, you've got nothing to worry about. He's as gentle as a lamb. Here, shake. I said shake. Don't you know how to shake? <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> You make yourself comfortable, I'll do the shopping. I see his oxtail soup, a dozen tins of corned beef. Doggone it, Joe, get out from behind my counter. And don't tell me you're doing the shopping. Kate does that. I ain't shopping for the shady rest. I'm shopping for my client. Oh, sorry, sir, I... <laughs> what is that, Joe? That my skittery shopkeeper. The J. Paul Getty of the canine world. <laughs> Prince Hamlet of Cohenberg of Von Oshmeyer III allow me for, to present Sam Drucker. What do I do, Neil? <laughs> A simple curtsy ought to do it. Frankly, Joe, I wish you'd get that beast out of here. He makes me nervous. He can also make you a pile of dough if you listen to the proposition I've got. What's that? I've owed you a small amount for a short time, haven't I? You've owed me a big amount for a long time. Well, never mind the details. The point is, if you're willing to wipe out this piddling little sum, I'll lay a thousand dollar advertising scheme right in your lap. You lay a thousand dollars in my lap and you'll own this store. <laughs> this dog gets a fortune for just having his picture taken with the product. I'll tell you what we're going to do. This is perfect. Now you take this ring of sausage, you're about to put it around the dog's neck, like a winning horse at a racetrack. Yeah, and then what? Well, then under the picture, you put one of them gag captions like, you can be a winner too. Shop at Drucker's. You never sausage bargains. That ain't no baloney. <laughs> Watch it, Joe. I haven't had my lunch yet. <laughs> this is going to be a great publicity stunt. Have you got a camera? Yeah, I got one in the back room. <laughs> you know, it amazes me how I come up with this stuff. <laughs> this for you, Hamlet, you could... <laughs> Here's the camera. Sam, I got another idea. How about you standing over by the cash register with this bunch of carrots in your hand, and the caption will read, for 14 carat... You know something? You being a businessman, maybe you'd like to come up with your own idea. I have. I'm going to add $3.60 to your account. And if you get any more of these bird brain schemes, forget them. Guess you just ain't a visionary. What can you envision selling me for this? Hey, a $50 bill. That's the first one I've ever seen in the valley. And it took a dog to bring it in. Let's step over to your meat counter. Sure thing. All right. What'll it be? Horse meat? Horse meat? <laughs> Sorry. How about uh, ground round? Liver. The ribs? Uh, pot roast. When you get the top sirloin, start slicing. He is a handsome dog, isn't he? Yeah. The rock cuts into the kennel set. <laughs> I just brushed you last week. Besides, we've got a full-time job here. Oh, all right. No 
candlelight and wine. <laughs> fix for you. Just don't tell Kate there. Put sheets on it. Where do you think you're going? You sleep where you always sleep. Hey, take your gunny sack with you. Look, you start bringing in a thousand clams a week, and then it's time enough for a change. Now go on, beat it. Some of these bar girls kill me the way they... Hey, you! <laughs> oh, well, I guess you are a company. Here, you must have left some time ago. Here, boy. What's the matter? The dog's gone. Gone? Oh, my gosh, he can't be. He was right behind me. Oh, you mean our dog? <laughs> For a minute there, you had me scared. Oh, How can you be so heartless? Now, now, take it easy. I just meant it was lucky that Hamlet ain't the one because, uh, well, because he's a born tracker. He's been trained for centuries to follow even the faintest scent. He'll find our dog for us, won't you, Hamlet? Hamlet? That's funny, he was right behind me when I started down. Maybe the great tracker got lost on the stairway. That could happen to anybody. Them stairs got that tricky turn in them. Where'd you find him? Well, I hate to tell you this, but he was in your bed. I knew how furious you'd be, so I roasted him out. I guess he was waiting to have his breakfast served. In bed? Well, you know how these rich guys are. Uncle Joe, please get him on the trail of our dog. Please. Our dog is gone, Steve. His bed's cold. You got nothing to worry about, girls. It's probably a good thing Hamlet didn't have his breakfast. It'll make his keen sense of smell even keener. Come on, I'll give you a scent of the pooch's gunny sack. Now, here's a smell, see? If Hamlet's half as good as he is on TV, it should be a cinch. How about some breakfast, Steve? Thanks, but I've got a crop dusting contract. I'll grab a bite while I'm refueling in Hooterville. And look, I'll fly low and keep an eye out for the little fellow. Well, come on, girls. Let's get some breakfast, eh? Mom, how can you at a time like this? Betty Joe, don't get panicky. Hamlet will find him or he'll come home on his own. But what if he doesn't? Oh, I know. Maybe he went to Miller's Pond to bark at the frogs, or... No. He went to the cave to dig up bones. Sure, that's where he's got to be. Betty Jo. Oh, that girl and her dog. They're closer than Mary and her little lamb. <laughs> Miller's Pond? Could have gone there. He might have fallen in. Hi, Mr. Drucker. Oh, hi, Steve. Been doing a little dusting? A little. Worked over the Foster place. How about a grape soda? Coming right up. Nice and cold. Oh, I, I'm glad you're here. There's a long-distance phone call for anyone from the Shady Rest. I guess that includes me. Yes, yeah, Sarah said to ask for operator 34. It's real urgent. Oh, I hope it isn't bad news. Sarah, Steve Elliott. 
Do you want to give me Operator 34? She's Operator 34. <laughs> Sarah, she makes a big deal out of everything. She's Operator 16 if there's a fire, 411 if you want the frost warnings, and 202 if you need the sheriff. Sarah, what's the message? Oh, I'm sorry. What's the message, Operator 34? <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. I'll tell him. That Mr. Morton is coming back for his dog. Be here this afternoon. Ooh, I hope His Royal Highness has every hair in place. <laughs> By the way, have you seen the Bradley dog? Uh, way up here? No, is he missing? Uh, he was this morning. But he's probably back. Hamlet went out to look for him. How about that? Not everybody has a prince looking for him. <laughs> That's right. Well, I guess I'd better get on back with this hot flash. So long. Oh, well, let me know if the pup doesn't show up. The shady rest wouldn't be the same without that little fella. I know. back to the cave again, then past Mr. Carter's orchard and Mr. Kiley's barn, down by Ziffel's hog pond, all the places he likes to go. Don't cry, Betty Jo. Can't help it. <laughs> Now, girls, please don't cry. Girls, please stop crying for my sake. For, for your sake? Yes. Somebody's got to be brave around here, and I know it isn't going to be me. <laughs> if our little dog ever comes back, we're just going to let him know how we feel. That's oh, yeah. sure will. We're going to let him know that nobody, but nobody can take his place. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been? How glad we are hey, to see you. Look, I'm just in time for a happy reunion. You are. You just got back. That's great. Oh, those guys would give a lot for your popularity, pal. <laughs> By the way, where is Uncle Joe and his royal highness? Oh, uh, he and Hamlet are out tracking down him. Well, he better be getting back and have his charge all groomed and ready. Mr. Morton is coming in on the afternoon cannonball. Yeah. Uncle Joe can count me out when it comes to printing up Hamlet. That goes for me, too. I'm not going to run any more chances of making this little guy feel he's not wanted. For me? Either. Now, wait a minute. May we, we all have to pitch in, you know. Well, th th that dog isn't just any dog. Why, it's a... Oh, Uncle Joe... Uncle Joe, you're just in time. Mr. Morton is coming in on the cannonball this afternoon. So there'll be time to clean up Hamlet, get the burrs off of him. Where is he and what is that in your hand? I don't know. This is a broken leash. You mean he got away? Yeah. What happened was, we were behind Alper's ranch, and old Hamlet was a sniffling like mad, hot on the trail of our prey. You mean him? Yeah, him. Yes, we were close. What's he doing here? He just showed up. Boy, are you a double-crosser. You should be out there where you're Sandia. What about Hamlet? Well, we were hot on the trail, just like I said. When all of a sudden, this rabbit jumped out from behind a bush. And old Hamlet charged after him like a bullet. And I was on the other end of the leash. Then as we were going... Please, Uncle Joe, leave out the sordid details. Mr. Morton is coming to pick up the dog. Oh, my gosh. A thousand dollar a week dog. Yeah, I know, I know. But, Kate, this is no time to get panicky. We've got to approach this thing with a calm mind. Well, that's true, but I just hope your calm mind comes up with an answer. There's nothing to it. While you're preparing to meet Martin, I'm going to be in my room packing. <laughs> No, but we do have a dog to find. True. I can't find him. Steve. Well, who says dog hunting can't be fun? Now be serious. I'm serious. But if you really want to get on with it. Oh! Steve, now that isn't fair. I tripped. On what? That isn't fair, either. Here, boy! Here, boy! 
Come, fella, come, fella. Come here, you crazy mutt! <laughs> Cannonball. With Morton on it. For years, he's been asking me to come over and spend the night playing checkers. Miss <laughs> Bradley. Mr. Carson. Someplace? Oh, no, no. I, I, I bring him a laundry down to Kate. I keep it in this so it don't get mixed up with the girl. Where's Emmett? Emmett? Well, I got him out getting a little exercise. Oh, good. The girl's looking after him? Yeah, yeah, the girl's looking after him. Fine. I wouldn't want anything to happen to that gold mine. We just signed the biggest deal ever for Hamlet while I was in New York. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> You mean he's lost? Yeah, you mean he's lost? Joe! <laughs> Mr. Carson, if you're covering up something here, and that dog is lost... Now, now, Mr. Martin, there's no need to get excited. I got that young fellow Steve and Billy Joe out there looking, and they're very sharp. You can count on them. <laughs> Mr. Carson, I'm warning you. Now, relax, Mr. Martin. Kate's still out there. She can find anything. She's always finding my cufflinks, money under the sofa, four-leaf clovers. She's probably one of the greatest. I guess she lost her touch. Mr. Carson, I'm holding you responsible for that dog, the most valuable dog in the advertising media. And if he's gone, I'm charging you Mr. with... Mr. Morton, you're overlooking one thing. What's that? You've got a very smart dog there. A brilliant dog. He'll find his way back. What do you mean, brilliant? He's the most stupid dog around. He just looks good, that's all. He's stupid? Yes, yeah, stupid. When we're making those commercials on film and we want him to bark, we have to hold up an idiot card. <laughs> what are we going to do? What I'm going to do is sue you for every dime you've got. Mr. Martin, if you're hitting, you want that 50 bucks back. 50 bucks. <laughs> 50 bucks in this hotel wouldn't be the down payment on what you're going to owe me. Well, if you think your threats are scaring me, you're right. Why don't we sit down and talk this thing up? Hey, look! Hamlet, baby! What did I tell you? All he had to do was get his royal snoot to work, and then he could find his way back from Alaska. I know my dog, and when I said that dog was brilliant, I... <laughs> there you are. You were worried about him. You implying you weren't worried? <laughs> no, not if you don't count that extra 50 you promised me for taking care of him. Oh, yes. Here you are. <laughs> oh, come on, Kate. Not until you promise to buy him the biggest steak in Sam Drucker's store. Okay, it's a deal. <laughs> Fair enough with you?